have a look at what's going on. This is why I talked about x squared, right? Let's just workshop the first question together. The function f of x equals x plus 3 is defined over the domain 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. Can you draw this with me? Maybe you want to make a subheading where you're going to start your exercise. Let's just draw this and work it through together. We're going to draw this very simple function in a particular domain. When we draw this, we'll be able to answer all of the um, all of the questions that are there, but it'll be much easier to actually see them. So when you draw this guy x plus 3, is that going to be enough of my axes? We'll find out in a second. What does x plus 3 look like? You can visualize the entirety of x plus 3, probably. Here it is. There's x plus 3. It's got our gradient of 1, and it's visually, you know, it's been shifted up vertically, 3 units, OK? I'm not going to draw this yet, though, because I don't want all of it. There's a restriction on it, from 0 to 2. Which part of this line am I going to draw? Hmm. Where's it going to start from? It's going to start from, ooh, which axis is it going to start from? Because I'm, I'm going from here thinking vertically uh, in terms of you know, where I am, my restriction starts from here. There's x equals 0, because that's a horizontal thing. And it keeps on going, keeps on going, until it hits 2. And then it stops. That's it. That's the whole thing. Okay. So I'm going to draw some indicators there. Do you have to put those um, big fat dots on the ends? You don't have to, but we have language to describe whether I actually exist at those points or whether I don't, and I actually know whether I exist or not. Why am I doing field circles? Have a look. What part in the question tells me I need field circles here rather than hollow ones? Say that again, Shirley. Nice and loud. <coughs> the inequality says, it's equal to zero, it's equal to two, the boundaries are included. Okay, that's what my field circles are for. Very good, so now I'm gonna state the range of x, that's, sorry, the range of f of x, that's the initial question. So for part a, the range is talking about where I am up and down, yeah, up and down. What's the lowest spot here? What's that value? That's three, yeah? I'm thinking about range, yeah? And then I go up, I climb up a little bit to here. What's the gradient of this line again? It's 1. So every time I go across a unit, I go up a unit. Across a unit, up a unit. That means if you're going to cross 2, you're going to go up 2 as well. Is that OK? So therefore, I can say the range of f of x range will be 0 is less than or equal to um, y. Sorry, what did I just say? 0. 3 is less than or equal to zero, uh, y is less than or equal to 5. OK with that? Now, I usually state range in terms of x's and y's, right? This is y. I can also say because y equals f of x, I could just as easily say that 3 is less than or equal to f of x, which is less than or equal to 5. Is that OK? These th two things are identical to each other. What's part b asking? State the domain and range of f inverse. What did we say when we looked at the big table and we drew everything about algebraically the difference between a function and its inverse? What did we do with the variables? We swapped their places, right? We switched them around. So everywhere we saw an x, we put a y. Everywhere we saw a y, we put an x. Okay? So therefore, see this range here, which has y's in it? When you do the switch, what will it become? When you switch around this y and you put an x in there, it's not talking <laughs> about range anymore, is it? It's talking about Domain. So therefore, I can say the domain of the inverse is 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5. Yeah? Now I want to work out range. Where do I get that from? Have a look. I'm going to switch, right? I want y's. Where did I see a restriction on x? 0 to 2. Yeah, 0 to 2, back in the original question, right? So that's my range restriction for the inverse. 0 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 2. Okay? Uh, what would it look like? Where is this thing going to be? Between 3 and 5 horizontally? Between 0 and 2 vertically? Do, do you see it? Do you need to turn your page 45 degrees? 
and then think about where the line of symmetry is going to be. Where's the line of symmetry? Y equals X. Oh, that's a terrible Y equals X. Sorry. That's better. Where's the reflection? Can you see where it's going to go? Do you see where it's going to land? I think it's going to land here. Yeah, do you see it? See how there's three and there's five? Do you see the reflection across, right? Do you see how useful it is to think visually about what's going on? Uh, and that would be two there. And then you can say, write down the rule for f inverse of x. So what they want is an algebraic expression. So I have enough space over here. What do I do with those variables? I'm gonna switch them around, right? So instead of writing y, uh, or f of x rather, equals x plus 3, what are the two things I switch? Well, the inverse will look like this. Here's the x on the left-hand side I want, and on the right-hand side I have f inverse. See, that's like the y, right? Plus 3. That's a bit messy. I should write this more neatly. I'll subtract 3 from both sides, and that gives me this, just like you saw before. Are you happy with that? Okay, the hardest part about this is all of the weird language surrounding this. You know how to, like, really? That's the answer? That's the most complicated object we're going to deal with here? It's not hard stuff, but the language around it is kind of, oh, what is it even asking? Okay, 